Welcome to the art project. I'm going to do a video uh, loosely inspired by Romare Bearden. And in my class, we're talking about Romare Bearden and his work, as you see there in the corner. Uh, this is the final piece. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, the first thing that I like to do is brainstorm. Uh, obviously, I got to know what it is that I'm going to make my work of art of, uh, if it's not going to be non-objective. And so I brainstorm 25 different themes. One of the reasons I do 25 different themes is because most likely the first ones are going to be boring or plain, or the same thing everybody else thinks of. So I like to brainstorm a lot until I run out of ideas, and then that makes the last ideas a little bit more interesting. Then I'm going to pick a theme out of that bunch, and I decide on coffee. And then I'm going to do step three, which is several, uh, I'm going to sketch several thumbnail sketches. Uh, thumbnail sketches are important because I don't want to put on the final piece of paper some um, idea that I haven't planned out or I haven't thought about. I want to know that I know what I'm doing. And so I did three different thumbnail sketches of coffee. Coffee was the theme that I decided to go with and after doing three thumbnail sketches I came up with one that I kind of like. You may have to do six or seven or twenty thumbnail sketches if you don't have any ideas or if you are a new artist, if you're a student, you may have to do several thumbnail sketches. Don't be in a hurry. Just work hard. Um, once I came up with a thumbnail sketch that I liked, I decided to try out some of my textures, or try out some different textures. I uh, added some lines in the background to give the background uh, some distinction from the foreground. And then I got some yellow paper with some uh, red paint all over it. And I cut it to fit the sketchbook page, of the um, composition put plenty of glue on it and glued it down in place. After that, I made sure that I had the uh, coffee mugs traced properly. By the way, don't miss any little spots. Here I am getting the little spot right there in the handle. For the coffee mug in the front, I decided I wanted uh, brown. Uh, I've actually got a coffee mug that's sort of brown in color, and so I'm just kind of copying off of it inspired by it and I wanted a brown coffee mug. I found this deck which is like uh, the porch of a house that was wood had wood planks on it and I used that for my brown mug and then I also filled it in with uh, filled some details in with pin. I was planning on doing the other mug uh, brown as well the fifth step is to put a half inch border around your 9 by 12 inch paper. And then step six is to draw the mug larger or draw your composition larger on that piece of paper. Once you have your composition drawn out, then you're pretty much going to go to the very last step, which is step seven, fill your drawing with different textures. Uh, you can do this a lot of different ways. Uh, you can just piecemeal uh, different textures together. Uh, but what I did was I took some tracing paper and I traced my composition and then I used that to trace on the back of the textures to transfer the image uh, to the back of the textures and then I cut them out and really what I'm cutting out here is the table. I'm cutting the mugs out of the table surface here and I'm gonna put uh, plenty of glue on the back of it. This is what I like to call the sticker method because it's like a sticker. It's got glue all over the back surface of it so there are no edges peeling up. And then for the front mug I wanted some uh, brown tones to do the uh, mug so I cut out a lot of different brown images and then once I had several brown images to choose from I traced my coffee mug again uh, 
and I traced it onto a separate sheet of paper this time because I wanted to make sure that um, my coffee mug was just right. And then I glued all of these down to the uh, coffee mug shape. I decided to add some details like the edge of the handle, the rim, and the coffee on the inside. This wasn't uh, really a last minute decision. Uh, I hope I didn't make it sound that way, but I wanted to uh, add the details here. So I got other colors of brown, uh, different colors for the rim and for the top of the handle. I like using people's faces because I think it's always interesting to look at an object, you know, whether it be an, an apple or a bird or a coffee mug and see pieces of, you know, like eyes and nose and mouth in there, even though it's not really supposed to be a person. I think that makes it a lot more interesting. <clears throat> So I glued down the rim to the top of this mug. So I've kind of assembled the whole mug separately from the work of art itself. And then once I have the mug made the way I want it to be made, I will glue it to the picture. Thanks for watching, y'all. Don't forget to um, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And share this for me on your Facebook or your Instagram or your whatever your social media is. And then once I had that, I, I basically assembled a coffee mug on a separate sheet of paper and then cut it all out and I'm going to glue this down. This coffee mug is not made out of one color from one source, but several different um, images from a magazine, several different images. So for the second coffee mug, I decided to use uh, another set of tones, another set of skin tones. And that way it's as if two people of two different colors sat down to enjoy a cup of coffee together. Two friends of two different races. Again, I assembled sort of a whole coffee mug on a separate sheet of paper cut it out and then glued it into place. Uh, I love old envelopes and so I cut out the inside of an envelope, the texture, and use that for my background. That's it. I hope you liked it. Now it's your turn to go and make a new work of art.